We have seen some brands make some difficult choices this year, difficult decisions. And over the past three or four years, we have seen some brands just completely disappear off the face of the earth and kind of like just checked out without really making a big deal out of it. And we've also seen quite a few brands um, file for bankruptcy as well. And whether that's been fixed or not, whether been bought out by other people, loads of shit is going on in the beauty world. I want to make some predictions for 2024 and I want to see if you agree with me. These are some brands that I think are going to begin to go out of business or go out of business in 2024. Let me know if you agree with my choices down below in the description box. Consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. Let's get into it. I want to start off with Urban Decay. Now, I made a video on Urban Decay and I was like, you know what? I feel like they can save themselves from destruction. I feel like they went down this path of trying to appeal to a wider range of people, right? Before they were quite edgy, kind of grungy, you know, and it was, it was more alternative. Whereas, oh, I want to change my lip actually. One second. And I think they went into this place where like, we need to appeal to more people. We need to be um, available for everyone everyone available for everyone interesting to everyone and i think they they actually shot themselves in the foot what was interesting about their brand was that uniqueness that they had as like a more alternative brand right with amazing products alongside that they definitely went into this realm of boringness so they get they got very very boring and then they started to create like new things that were doing really really well like the lip my dogs are having a fight behind me so sorry you can hear them the liquid blush some of their naked palettes start to get a bit more interesting no one knows why they were still calling them naked palettes and then they did like this what was it like space cowboy the um you know the shimmery things i can't remember what they were called they were doing really well and going viral and i thought this could possibly be a new beginning for them they can crawl their way out of this out of this hole that they're in recently urban decay has shut down their website in the uk much like other brands have in the past like smashbox um what's that face mask glam glow and it's, for me it's not a good sign it feels like a way to save money. It feels like perhaps the UK market isn't interested with them anymore or interested in them anymore, sorry. Still available on third party websites. Is that what you call third party? You know, like websites that sell their products for them. And I'm assuming department stores. It'll be interesting to see if counters close down, make their stores, stores. It'll be interesting to see if their makeup counters shut down over the next year. Yeah, I would. that's going to be very, very interesting. But I feel like they might possibly have to be bought out this year or they are gonna shut down because despite them appearing to do a little bit better than they were something isn't adding up you know my next one is makeup revolution or revolution right there's been too much shit go down with this brand and i don't i'm not sure on the updates but from what i remember recently boohoo do you have boo is boohoo worldwide or is it just in the uk we're trying to buy them out or trying to do something where they were going to be more involved in the brand and sell it on their website i feel like they're in a bit of a sticky situation because nothing they release is great it never has been but you don't hear about them as much anymore there are other drugstore brands that are doing better things and coming out with new amazing products max factor rimmel um nyx is doing well elf is doing incredibly well all these brands are doing incredibly well and they're releasing really good product makeup revolution or revolution release decent products for a similar price to these drugstore brands that make incredible products. So you can rely a little bit more on these drugstore brands. You wouldn't rely so much on Revolution that all they do is dupe everything and not very well. They don't seem to have as much of an online presence. And I feel like they've stopped doing collaborations with influencers. Am I right? I don't really keep up with them, but it's been a long time since I've seen anyone share like a new collaboration that Revolution have done. They keep bringing out these mediocre, um, licensed kind of um, collections and they just don't, they're just incredibly boring all the time. They're just so, so boring. I know they've had some legal trouble and some money issues and I feel like it's come to the end of a line for them in terms of what they do, how exciting they are, which isn't very. If they don't shut down, I can't see them improving. Stale. Stagnant. Okay. Um, Fab Fit Fun. 
this box. I don't think we have it in the UK, but I see it a lot online and people do like dedicated videos for it. Like, oh, fab bit fun. Subscription boxes in general don't, don't work anymore. People want to know what they're buying. They want to know what brands they're purchasing. They want to know the brand's ethics. They want to know exactly what they're getting. We have too much access to too many brands to be blindly purchasing for a random box of products. Gone are the days of being excited of random products showing up at your door and be like, oh my God, oh, I'll get rid of this one. I'll give this one to a friend. With money recently as well, we all kind of want to know what we're buying and, and know where our money is going. Not a lot of people are in the position to be spending however much it is a month to receive products that they might not like. I personally wouldn't want to spend, let's say like even 15 pounds, $30 a month on products of where I, I don't know what's turning up. Subscription boxes, bags, things like that. Unless it's like for one brand, like I know some brands do a mystery bag for their own brand and you know you like that brand and you kind of have a bit of an idea of what you're gonna get. That's cool, but I think when it's a mixture of loads of different stuff, I just don't think it sits well with people anymore and people don't wanna take that risk. That's what it is, it's the risk. So Raban recently started a makeup brand and the products are really, really good. I actually filmed a whole video because they sent it to me in PR and I, cause it's, cause it's me, I deleted it. I really, really like their products. Their eyeshadows are stunning. Their lip products are beautiful. Some of the breast, breast, some of the best products I've tried in a really, really long time. Unfortunately, I don't feel like it's getting the attention it deserves. Mainly cause I guess it's quite pricey cause it is a design, like a fashion house brand. One of the only good ones around, mind you, they have marketed it in a way that's quite high fashion, Um, which I mean, it's a fashion brand, but I, I feel like to kind of, stand within the makeup industry at the moment, you need to cater to everyone. Um, and they could do a little bit more in terms of social media presence online. I feel like it's not doing that well. Have you seen anything from them recently, Raban? Anyone trying stuff or doing anything? I love the products. I think they're beautiful. That's the box that all came in. Actually, I use it to keep my things on. So well made, such good quality, useful, artistic. Like the eyeshadows are, beautiful like they are so so nice so i i just have this feeling that maybe they won't do like a mark jacobs situation like kind of went out of business and then came back i feel like it's that kind of deal which i really hope not because i would love to see what comes from them in the future in terms of their different products like their mixing mediums everything they have to offer so i would be disappointed if they went away if you couldn't find them online anymore if you couldn't find them anywhere because i still want to try some of their lip balms actually or their lipsticks they look really nice i have a few of them already and they're really beautiful, so I do want to try some more. That's just one of those, like, oh, I hope not, but it, it feels like that way. Going on to that, Prada's makeup. <laughs> Maybe it won't go away, but I feel like it might, um, they might not invest any more into it. I think it was a bit of hype about it when people were saying, oh, they're going to release makeup, it's going to be really good. And it kind of just instantly died down. I would love to know if there's, if any of you tried anything from Prada, their makeup launch, and if it's become a staple for you because I ha I've yet to see that from anyone. I just, again, it's that whole thing of being quite high priced. I feel like now you can't justify products being so expensive when we have such good drugstore options. Like I keep saying, not even just drugstore, indie brand options, mid-range options are so good and so vast. We don't need to rely on super expensive or super pricey makeup if we don't have to and if we don't want to. Next up is a brand that I'm surprised hasn't gone out of business already, and that is Ofra. Ofra Cosmetics, they hit a bit of a um, snag when some stuff came out about their racist brand owners. My nose is not level. This nostril's higher than this nostril, right? I used to love their highlighter. I think it, they were so beautiful. I love them. Um, but I, it's just not a brand I can support. And I think a lot of people agree also. Again, another brand you just don't hear anything about. They used to be constant, like, influencers doing things with them, lip sets with them, highlighters with them. And now I feel like nobody really wants to work with them. I think a few people did, but I don't think they were aware. Or perhaps Oprah's history um because i feel like they wouldn't have done it when brands become like brands that you don't really see online that often aren't being discovered by new people i feel like you it then becomes a brand where people just buy their like regular things from them like their highlighter but i do feel in the world that we live in in terms of makeup people want to try new things quite often so you can't rely on that return customer all the time we live in that fast pace makeup world now you know where it's new 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 all the time you're going to be outdone at some point and people are going to forget you so i do think it's really really important to try and 
capture new people, try and get new people in. And I feel like that's something that Ofra don't do. Um, I, I don't follow them on any social media, but there's many brands I don't follow on social media, but see often on social media, you know, from other creators and things like that. And I feel like that's not, not somewhere where the brand excels at all. Okay, last but not least, Rem Beauty. I don't, what do I say about this one? Apart from it's like owning a brand going out of business, I'm sure they've been bought out by someone else now. It just doesn't feel like a brand that has the excitement around it that it did when it launched. Like a lot of brands, you know? This one feels like they launched with loads of exciting different products. Like we had those highlighters that were unique in color and it was all quite exciting. And now they've released their foundation. It kind of just, it's like, okay, basics. We're doing, we're going through the basics. And I feel like we need to do something exciting again because they're gonna get boring, they're gonna get stale, they're gonna get stagnant. Um, and I, I feel like nobody will be, is interested in the brand as much as they used to be. Perhaps it has its hardcore fans and people who absolutely love it, but I just don't see them having that like e group excitement. What's worldwide excitement that that it used to? Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about the brand. The packaging's cute, it's a cute concept of a brand. But I mean, I guess it's it's that thing of a, a brand releasing what every other brand does and it's kind of becoming a bit copycat like or a bit like oh we have to do this we have to do this i do wish i just want a brand to come out with something completely new unique and just surprise us and just give us something really amazing and just give us something that we can be excited about because at the moment no one's doing that especially rem beauty REM, R-E-M, however you want to say it. I, I do feel like, again, they're going to get purchased by someone else or they're just going to disappear. All right, let me know if you agree with what I said down below. Any brands that you think might be going out of business this year? And let me know any brands you think are going to blow up this year and do really, really well. I would love to know your opinions down below. Thank you so much for joining me. Consider subscribing. I will see you very, very soon. Bye.